What's going on there, folks? Good morning, a good afternoon here. The Earth Master on the live stream with an update video on this uh, February 2nd, 2022 date, about 10.55 a.m. California time. A lot of twos happening today. 2-2, 2022. A little bit of significance there in numbers. Uh, what do we got for the latest quake on the globe here is a 5.2 earthquake into the Kermadec Trench region. Looking at the Earthquake 3D globe here shows... Uh, the activity kind of ramping up here in this specific area right around that green flag indicating that shallow earthquake there in the uh, Kermadec Trench and the Tonga region uh, right around the volcanic uh, areas as well of Tonga some movement kicking up there once again overnight let's go ahead and check it out here on the latest USGS map you can see the red circle down here indicating that most recent earthquake 5.2 and uh, quite a few other fives along the Kermadec Trench area have been seeing a pretty good amount of swarming activity here within the last week. Uh, but up here around the Tonga area, still seeing some movement uh, around the volcanic chain here with Hunga Tonga right here in this little speck. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see the uh, volcanic uh, island there. 4.9 striking in that region last night. Uh, just south there, it looks like about maybe 12 miles or so to the south of the volcano but overall generally speaking quite a bit of movement here along the Kermadec Trench, Tonga Trench and once again some deep deep earthquake activity just outside the Tonga and Fiji regions uh, with a uh, 4.6 coming in at 583 kilometers below the surface there quite a quite a bit of deep movement kicking up here also we're starting to notice a little bit of return of movement up here off the coast of Japan uh, just to the east of Tokyo along the Japan Trench uh, subduction zone earthquake it looks like 49.9 uh, kilometers below the surface for a 4.4 earthquake uh, like I said this one just occurring off the coast still watching this region here folks this this uh, got to be building up some accumulated stress there uh, and it's uh, been all too quiet within that region recently uh, what else we got we did see some further movement to the west here uh, in this area of the world around Iran a 4.7 struck uh, earlier this morning and also some further movement outside of Greece uh, happening earlier this morning as well uh, with a 2.9 nothing significant out in the Atlantic Ocean uh, South Sandwich Trench regions showing some return of movement here with a 4.9 into the subduction zone here at 54.8 kilometers uh, it's been quiet for the past couple days but looks like activity returning there as the plates shift around uh, West Coast has seen uh, quite a bit of movement as well over the last couple days. I'll go ahead and bring up the all magnitude or the uh, let's we'll stick with the 2.5 real quick here. Kind of see some of the larger quake above the 2.5 threshold uh, kicking up here around the Bakersfield area and also up the coast here. Uh, seeing a another 2.5 right smack dab there on the uh, oceanic fault zone just off of it looks like. It's this little fault system that kind of runs up here along the coastline. San Andreas Fault sits over here to the east, a dark red line. Uh, movement outside of Bakersfield again. I believe this is the area that's seen some swarming kick off here. Um, uh, let's see, I think it was over a week or so ago now. Let me see if I can bring it up here on the 30 days. <clears throat> I take that back. It's kind of new activity out here around the Elk Hills. 2.5 outside of Button Willow. Uh, the swarming that we were watching near the Willer Ridge is down south a little ways, uh, but we have not seen any further movement return to that area of the uh, of the state of California. But uh, definitely seen some activity up and down the west coast. San Andreas Fault as well, seen some movement up here to the north around Gil Gilroy and the Watsonville area. Zooming in a little bit closer uh, view of the area. Looks like a couple twos and some other microquakes around the vicinity of the Gilroy area. It looks like it's just off the, uh, which fault system is that? Sergeant Fault Zone. So yeah, I don't really recall too much, hearing too much about this area here, uh, but it looks like a pretty lengthy fault zone just off the San Andreas Fault. Um, not super highly populated, but there is, uh, of course, the communities of, of Gilroy and Watsonville around this area. Uh, but either way, uh, definitely some movement outside of the San Andreas Fault in that region. Uh, up into the north, not a whole lot around the Bay Area, just this little microquake uh, just south of the uh, um, the major part of the Bay Area. 
and off of the San Andreas Fault to the east. Uh, movement up into the north, northern part of Northern California, not showing a whole lot of activity here on the map. And, um, you know, it's possible these guys aren't reporting it. Once again, I haven't seen any seismic activity on the graphs. Uh, of course, I haven't been watching them too much this morning. been kind of busy on this end. But uh, pretty quiet up here for now. Uh, we were watching some trimmer activity kick up into the Cascadia subduction zone. Of course, that was ultimately uh, applying further stress up here along the locked area. We started to see some movement off the coast and into the area of the locked zone of the Cascadia yesterday with a couple twos and some deeper earthquakes into this region. But today, not a whole lot showing up there. So we'll see what the trimmer looks like a little bit later on this evening uh, when that comes out. Uh, some further activity up around the Victoria area. Uh, I believe that was a quake from last night at 2.4. And some movement up around Mount St. Helens. Once again, some microquakes kicking off there right at the summit. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, map here for the uh, volcanoes into the Pacific Northwest. The PNSN network, which is a Pacific Northwest seismic network, uh, is a pretty cool site to check out the seismographs of volcanoes and just general seismic activity into the Pacific Northwest if you want to check it out. Uh, but right now we're going to check out the Mount St. Helens area and look at the earthquake activity over the last two weeks here uh, in the region of the crater. You can see that. Uh, not a significant swarm, but definitely movement. And uh, it's pretty common to see earthquakes there uh, around any volcano, whether it's a volcanic or uh, tectonic in nature. But uh, let's go ahead and check out these seismographs here since we are seeing... Uh, some movement within this region. We'll check out. Uh, we'll check out this one right here. Little triangles there. You just click on them and uh, should pop up a graph. And if they're tuned correctly, we can see the earthquake activity uh, very distinctly. We'll see if these uh, see if they are tuned properly. These guys just I don't know taking a long time once again here with their graphs. I'm not sure what's going on. This one looks pretty tuned. This is properly tuned. You can see some very distinct localized earthquake activity without the clutter of having this uh, over amplified uh, every one of these little spikes here localized spikes even maybe some of these smaller ones those may be uh, something to do with the snow or ice at the uh, mountain there at the uh, volcano Mount St. Helens but these are uh, pretty well distinct earthquakes and uh, like the USGS was showing nothing significant uh, just a couple microquakes within that region of the Saint, uh, Mount St. Helens volcano area. Uh, so yeah, not uh, nothing major going on, just a little bit of a small microquakes there. And uh, let's see what else we got here on the USGS map. As far as volcanoes go, Mount Rainier showing a little bit of activity as well at the summit, uh, the summit area. A couple small microquakes there kicking off there, pretty shallow movement. Same thing if you go back here to the uh, volcanic seismicity and check on Mount Rainier. Uh, you can see the earthquake activity there at that volcano. We'll get rid of that so we can see a little bit better view. These guys don't have any specific stations right there at the uh, summit area. So a lot of times you have to go to these uh, little bit distant stations. See if this one here is working or not. And uh, see what these guys are reporting here far far as the uh, seismic activity goes. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, this activity, even though it's showing spiky movement here, looks like some type of interference. This does not look like uh, earthquake activity at all. All these spikes are pretty much the same in the width and the, uh, the uh, signature. So this is definitely some type of interference here. Uh, this other activity um, prior to this, whatever's going on here, looks to be... Uh, looks like there's some small microquakes within the region of Mount Rainier. Um, pretty, very, very small though. So I want to check out the previous day and see what these folks are reporting. There's a couple different ways you can monitor that data. You can switch stations here uh, that monitor vertical and the horizontal and whatnot if you want to go into that uh, detailed activity. But uh, definitely some movement there. There's a pretty well-defined one, another well-defined quake. So a couple of them happening there at the uh, volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest, but nothing significant. No no harmonic triver, trimmer. That would be a different signature on here, and we'll, we'll go over that uh, as far as reading the seismographs maybe a little bit later on this evening. How to decipher uh, uh, local earthquakes, 
which is pretty easy, right? Local earthquakes going to be well defined, spiked uh, signatures here. Distant earthquakes could look similar to that, uh, although it may uh, be different in size. Um, signatures like that are kind of a kind of a good indicator of something going on away from the uh, seismograph station. But uh, nothing major going on there at the volcanoes, folks. Three Sisters looks pretty quiet for now. Uh, the Idaho region did show a pretty significant swarm of movement uh, over the last two days at the northern end of the Sawtooth Fault Zone here, Saw Sawtooth Fault System. And uh, overnight, a few more earthquakes in the uh, 1 to 2 range kicking off there. Yellowstone, pretty quiet. This thing has been uh, lacking activity, let me tell you. It's been really quiet. Let's check this out on the seismographs here. And uh, things are just ultimately really super quiet. USGS Volcanoes uh, issued a, uh, a, their monthly statement on the Yellowstone activity, which is still, you know, um, green and everything's looking good as far as their data goes. Subsidence of the uplift continues. That kind of kind of came to an end back in 2000. Uh, I think I mentioned 2015. I'll go over that article a little bit later on uh, this evening, but uh, things kind of mellowing out. No uh, significant displacement of GPS stations or uh, no abnormal stuff going on here at Yellowstone National Park. Of course, Yellowstone, you know, kind of a big, a big um, super volcano, but you know, it's it's kind of up there on the list of of uh, items that people monitor. And right now, things are just super calm, super mellow out here with the Yellowstone uh, volcano. No earthquakes to report in that region, even from the raw data. Looks pretty quiet. Uh, so let's go over here to the west coast once again. Seeing uh, continued earthquake activity out here in the uh, eastern Sierra Nevada. Of course, we had that 3.5 strike up last night. Since then, uh, not a whole lot going on. This is all aftershock activity from that 3.5. And most of that uh, activity died off there south of Lake Tahoe uh, near the uh, Markleyville area uh, last night. And we haven't seen any renewed movement in this area of the, of the uh, Sierra Nevadas. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano sits up here. Some movement still outside of the uh, caldera, right around Tom's place it looks like, but just some microquakes uh, earlier this morning. Nothing really going on uh, further south through the Owens Valley fault system here. Uh, Ridgecrest still show, showing some movement, right? This is going to continue for months, if not years, of the uh, uh, from the uh, July 4th, July 5th earthquake activity. Garlock fault structure, pretty quiet today. Nothing going on, no query blasts. Not trying to start the big one out there today, it looks like. Uh, a little bit of query blast out here around the uh, Corona area up in the mountains, it looks like. A uh, 1.6 San Jacinto fault zone, this very lengthy fault system here. Uh, secondary, it looks like, to the uh, San Andreas fault, showing some activity and a little bit of swarming out here once again in the Santa Rosa mountain area. Uh, pretty deep movement, 13 kilometers or so below the surface and below the mountains. Nothing major going on, but uh, just a little swarming. Kind of take note of that. That's off the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone here. The uh, Buck Ridge Fault. It looks like the Anza section kind of splits off here. There's numerous segments of this Pacific Fault structure that run up and down uh, the, the southern part of the Pacific side of the plate here. Uh, what else we got? Palomar Mountain. What do we got going on here at the... Uh, what do we got here? Hold on a second here. A little bit of swarming north of the Vulcan Mountains couple of small earthquakes. Nothing really going on in the Palomar Observatory uh, that I can see at the moment. Things pretty mellow and quiet in that region. Uh, maybe one little quake. Eh, 1.5 near the Palomar Observatory. That was from uh, yesterday it looks like. But uh, no major swarming kicking up there. And the Salton Sea area did show some activity last night but even then uh, we haven't seen any further renewed uh, swarming activity within this region. Maybe a, one or two but something to watch pretty closely because swarms can pop off uh, very dramatically and quickly in that area, which is overall a general sign a sign of uh, some increased pressure here along the southern end of the San Andreas Fault, which, of course, we all know about. Um, what else we got? A little bit of activity stretching up into the Utah region. Once again, seems to be a fairly uh, stable pattern of earthquakes recently. Oklahoma and Texas, a little bit of movement there overnight. Uh, we did have a little bit of activity east of there into the New Madrid zone. One little earthquake here 
around the uh, Howardville, Missouri area. 1.7 at 7 kilometers there into the New Madrid zone and some further activity into the North Carolina and the South Carolina region today uh, with a 1.8 and 1.5 earthquake in that region. Uh, Ohio seen this earthquake last night, 1.6, uh, nothing major going on, but uh, definitely some increase in activity and a little swarm off the coast here of the uh, Mexico and the Guatemala area into the Middle America Trench. Some movement there, pretty shallow there at the subduction zone uh, with a 5.1 coming in here just within the last hour or so. So watching that region uh, with that swarming going on. South America remains relatively quiet. We had one little 4.2 in the Chile area. Uh, and also Puerto Rico showing up a little bit more heightened today up here around the Puerto Rico Trench where we had a 4.1 and a little bit of activity to the east here around the uh, British Virgin Islands. And of course, a pretty good swarm of movement here in the two and three range kicking up in the southwest area of Puerto Rico. Um, what else we got? There's that earthquake activity here in the Kermadec Trench. Of course, that's uh, kind of continuing here today, it looks like, with that 5.2 within the last hour. Uh, what else we got here? Solar weather. Let's go ahead and check this out while we're uh, looking at it. I believe that storm came in a little bit last night. Uh, let's see. Never really. What do we? Well, tonight it looks like potentially we could be getting into that G2 class storm category, um, which still shows a. Looks like we're getting elevated movement here on the geomagnetic field and the Aurora KP index is up around the four within the last hour. Uh, it did kick up a little bit last night and then died down, but I uh, expect this to ramp up, should ramp up still uh, as we uh, get that uh, disturbance there in the Earth's uh, field. G2 class storm is predicted. We'll see how much that holds true. 85% uh, chance of higher latitude auroras and the 40% uh, chance there at the mid-latitudes. Solar flare threat remains somewhat elevated with 80% uh, chance of C flare and 25% chance with an M. And X flare still seems to be holding steady at a 10% chance from the sunspots up here. 2936, this one here, 2939, kind of grown a little bit. And... Uh, We'll see how these things develop over the coming days as they uh, uh, come into the Earth's side. All right, folks, have a good day. Pretty windy out here once again in California. Uh, surprising the stream has been holding up pretty well. I uh, did notice last night that the uh, Earthquake 3D Globe decided to only show a few earthquakes on the globe. Something similar to about uh, like that. And there's no way that can happen unless it's uh, adjusted on my end. So I'm not for sure what's going on little games that are still being played it seems like even though I got a I don't know I'm pretty certain that I got uh, some good security on here but uh, I'm missing something somewhere because I still uh, have some weird stuff going on with the computer but uh, luckily stream's been up staying steady for now uh, for about two days now so we'll uh, hope and keep our fingers crossed that it stays up but uh, it is windy today so it'd be my luck that the uh, power goes down and I lose the stream that way Hopefully not. I better not jinx it, right? All right, guys, stay safe out there. Uh, a little bit of activity kicking up here. Uh, no doubt the West Coast and the Middle America Trench region. We will chat you guys a little bit later on this evening with the update. Stay safe, stay safe out there, folks. Peace out.